it just doesn't. You know, uh, the feeling of being able to win, the feeling to be able to go through hardship, the feeling of being able to enjoy this moment with your teammates, with your family, being able to know that there's a lot of there's a lot of time, the amount of days that you stacked to be able to get to this moment, you know, you dream of it. And to being able to be in the finals is something that I didn't expect myself to be a part of for, for a very long time. So just being able to do this in my first year, I just want to be able to learn as much as I possibly can and grow as much as I possibly can. Um, you know, I feel like my mama always, uh, always kind of said this, but you know, my way is the hardest way. You know, we're not going to take the easy way out. We're not going to cry if, uh, if things are going our way or if it seems like everything's stacked against us. We just got to be able to huddle, huddle together as a family, being able to lean on each other. You know, there's a lot of times where, you know, it might seem like the world's against you, or it might seem like, you know, you look in the mirror and you ain't seeing the same person. But whenever you come in here and you're able to smile with your teammates, being able to laugh with your teammates, being able to enjoy time with your teammates, it just being it makes everything outside of outside of the basketball world that much easier. You know, I feel like he's been one of the best coaches I've ever had. You know, he's putting me in positions where, you know, he's expecting me to fail. And even if I fail, he's going to leave me in there to learn. You know, I feel like, you know, his coaching style fits me very well. You know, he's walking into the locker room and then asking, so what do we think? Being able to have a coach like that who's going to make the players speak, make the players talk to one another, and then say what he thinks is an amazing process. You know, we're able to talk to one another about what we think we need to do together as a team. And then whenever the staff comes in, they bring in their own light, what they see from the court, because players and coaches see the game two different ways. And we're just able to help each other. You know, I feel like Coach Kidd is definitely, has definitely, uh, you know, there's been a lot of criticism on him, and I don't understand why. You know, I feel like he's an amazing coach and an amazing person. What are some of the ways that Ty can can affect you become the player you are today? Being able to be mentally tough, you know, being able to know that. You know, I look at him and I see myself plus 20, 25 years. And seeing someone who has been in my position, who has been in this seat, who has played in the championship, who has gotten the championship, being able to guide me, it makes me that much more confident in who I am. Knowing that he has my back, he's confident in me, makes me want to go out on the court and just play with that much more aggression. You know, I feel like there was an amazing team. You know, they've been on the top one, top three teams in the league the entire year. You know, they could they could shoot they could shoot the shit out of the ball. You know, one through five, they're an amazing team. They can space the floor. They can get to the rim. They have a lot of they have a lot of weapons that they can use on the floor. So it's just going to be able to, to try to be able to understand when they're going to use their weapons and when we can try to use their weapon against them. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, history of the pull stops here. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's basketball, man. You know, the media is going to try to turn into, you know, they're going to look at Kristoff, they're going to look at Kai, they're going to try to turn into something. But we're going to go out there and just play. You know, there's a lot of things, that's, a lot of tensions that's going on the floor, a lot of tensions that's going on in the locker room. But there's, it doesn't matter to us. We're focused on going out there and getting four wins in a row. Not four wins in a row, but four wins, stack them, and being able to know that there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, there's going to be a lot of people questioning things. And we got to be able to stick together with positive talk and be able to have each other's back. I think you said this is the, uh, the photo with the team photo on the plane. Uh, what's it like playing like that uh, while you're playing with the team? Um, it was interesting playing right back. You know, it was very high spirit, very high spirits uh, in the plane. But you know, we were driving in a thunderstorm. You know, we we're able to just lean on each other. We we're able to have fun, even in the moments where we we're kind of like, uh, are we gonna make it back? But you know. Uh, <laughs> 
it was a it was a great time. You know, everybody was leaning on each other. Everyone was talking to each other. You know, people in the front of the plane and people talking to people in the back of the plane. So it was just everybody from the flight stewardess to the pilot. Everybody was happy. And we even had fans that were waiting out in the rain at two, three in the morning. So being able to have people like that back you up just makes you want to go out there even harder. Did you envision yourself having this kind of impact in your rookie year based on what you've done? And what was the vision that the staff had for you going into the season? I don't think any of us expected this. I didn't expect this. My mom didn't expect this. Tyson didn't expect this. Jason Kidd didn't expect this. They just, they, they expected me to come in, come to the Dallas Mavericks and learn. And I feel like that's what I did. You know, I, I don't think they expected me to learn this much this quick. And I think I've been able to be very fortunate for them to put me in positions to learn. You know, there's been a, a lot of times where I was unsure of play calls, unsure of positions, I'm sort of, of different things, but I've been able to learn, lean on my team. You know, they back me up. They understand that I'm rookie. They understand that I haven't been in this situation before. But you know, I'm a fake it till I make it. And, you know, I attribute that to that I have an angel on my shoulder. You know, I feel like she helped me out there making my dunks and making my little hooks, some free throws, and just being able to just be a voice in the court. You know, I feel like I can definitely attribute that 16 to 16 for my mother. Man, I feel like, you know, every time you look in the court, you see Jason Kidd standing up and Keith's back talking, talking to everybody in the floor, even the other team. He doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going on, the, going on in the floor. Keith's thinking about the next play, the right play, or the right lineup. And there's a lot of times where we can look at each other and we know if someone's having an off game. We know if, if someone ain't making some shots, we're going to have to pick them up. And the first person to pick them up is Keith. You know, he's the first, first, he's first person off the floor. First person to dab you up after making a good play, but he's the first person to pick you up if you make a bad play. Being able to have someone like that is is amazing. You know, he's been in many different positions. He's been in many different teams. So he has a lot of different looks on what the NBA has. And I've definitely learned a lot from him and he's taught me a lot. Jerry, how are you feeling for help assembly? I'm great. Looking left, looking right. Up. <laughs> I'm great. You know, everyone's gonna ask, everyone's been asking for the past couple of days if I'm all right. You know, if I'm going to get hit in the head another three, four times, I'm still get back up and act like nothing happened. Eric, are you surprised at the way you just had such a strong relationship with the team and the Mavericks and how that works? You know, he was acquired before you even started. Mm -hmm. What was your feeling about that? You know, I'm here to win games. I'm not here to care about how many points I put on the board, how many rebounds I put on the board, how many times I start in the game. And he's the same way. You know, I feel like we have a great one-two dynamic of picking each other up. No matter if I'm having a bad game, he's having a bad game, or if we're both having a good game, we're going to pick each other up no matter what's going on. You know, being able to have both of us coming out there, setting screens, getting lobs, throwing elbows, catching rebounds, it's, it tr makes our teammates trust us since we got the paint, they know that they got to lock down the three-point line in the perimeter. And if they don't, they're just going to send them to us. And having that trust of, okay, if we ain't got them, our bigs got them. For sure. And I feel like me and Gaffer's dynamic is amazing. You know, I feel like I look at him as, a, as an older brother. You know, I've really leaned on him many times, understanding the different schemes in the game, understanding different points, when to make a push, when to be able to take care of the ball, and just understanding the flow of the game. <laughs> Brittany Cohen, you know, she's an amazing teacher. I love everybody, a part of that school, a part of that class. We've talked so much about how much you care about the next generation. And I don't know if you've seen the videos on Twitter, I'm sure that you have, of when they're you know, reenacting your dunks or just following up what you're doing in the next game. Can you please just tell that class and everyone about the support that they've shown this season? What they know I love them. They know, they know that for sure. You know, no matter if they had a lemonade stand, I drove like 45 minutes out and I almost got there late. But I was just trying to make sure that I can do whatever I can to make an impact in a kid's life. Because, you know, I feel like whenever we're young, we have many dreams, we have many aspirations. And when we grow up, we, we lose those. You know, we lose sight of who we wanted to be, uh, what dreams we had as a kid. And I feel like we should never lose those things. Those things kind of shape the person who you are and they shape the future who you could be. 
So I'm just trying to be able to make sure that no matter if you're five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, whatever you want to do, whoever you want to be, do your best to do it. Derek, as you mentioned, Boston shoots a lot of threes. You know, they have a tough five out offense. How much progression do you think this defense has achieved guarding five out offenses? It's come down to a lot of talk and trust, communication, and just trusting the next man behind you. You know, there's going to be a lot of rotations, a lot of scrambling going on. But I feel like we're going to be able to talk to each other. And even if we mess up, we're going to move on to the next play and learn. Because if we don't learn, then we shouldn't be here. Gary, the, the trade deadline has been pointed to as a, a turning point for the season. Uh, you know, with, with the talent in place, um, the, the pieces that came here, and then the investment on defense. But how does chemistry, um, how is that a key to the success that this team has going to the final game? Um, It has a lot. Understanding people's tempos, understanding what they like to do, what makes them uncomfortable, but being able to uplift your teammates because you know what spots to put them in or you understand what rhythm they like to get into. Uh, it took me a little while to understand Kyrie and Lucas, but whenever PJ and Gaff here, it was like they just picked up the things that we were trying to do. They hopped right into the schemes we were running and they fit like a perfect puzzle piece. So just being able to have that on, a, on the floor off the floor, we're a close, we're a close enough family. You know, we have, we always try to lean on one another where we try to see one another and try to enjoy time with one another. And that's going to make us on the floor tighter and more of a team. And what have you learned about yourself um, during this postseason? Tough as nails, man. Um, I don't care what name, what you do to me, what you throw at me. If I hit the ground, I'm going to get back up. You know, I feel like uh, at the start of the season, it was a little shaky. And throughout the middle of the season, it was definitely a little shaky. But it, when it comes down to those key moments and we have to sit down and guard, I love it. I love being in those moments. Uh, your adrenaline's pumping, your, your heart's pumping, and you just feel alive in those moments. Those moments where people try to break you down as a big and you're sitting in front of them, it, it, it kind of makes you chuckle because they look at you like, oh, he can move his feet. But, you know, it's definitely taking a, a, a long, long journey of being able to try to stay in front of people, especially people who are as talented as they are in the league. What do you think is going to be your biggest challenge with making this effort to your club over the years to come? Being consistent. No matter if they're making a run, no matter if we're making a run, we got to be able to have our foot on the gas. No matter what's going on on the floor, no matter what's going on and what they say in the stands, we got to be able to be poised, be focused, and execute. You know, I feel like there's a lot of, there's always, we feel like there's always someone pointing down on us and we're like, okay, cool. You know, you're going to say that about us. Watch what we're about to do next. And we've kind of just taken that to heart. You know, if people are going to just label us as underdogs, overrated, or we can't get things done, we just kind of shrug our shoulders. You know, I feel like we've all dealt with a lot of adversity in our life. A lot of people telling us we can't. And I feel like that drives us. Whenever people tell us we can't, we want to do it a little bit more. Yeah, actually, yeah, yep, yep. And uh, so your first game back, you were talking about just getting used to the playoffs and getting to the end of that. At what point in the playoffs did you kind of figure out, hey, man, I can do this, I can break this? Uh, hmm. That's hard. I feel like there was different waves. You know, there's a, it's an up and down type of mentality. You know, there's a lot of things that's going to go on. You might have some games where you're perfect from the floor, and you might have games where you're over for it. But... It really comes down to whenever you're making a defensive possession and you get a defensive stop and you're pushing on the offensive end and you see everybody on your team take off at the same time. When you're in that same light together at that point, it, it doesn't matter what is going on in the court. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter how, you, how you're doing it all. When you're going out there and you feel your teammates giving it their all, you just want to give it your all. So I feel like it was around like the Clippers series when we were in LA and I think we got the, the first win whenever I felt my team riding behind me every step without a hitch. That's how I knew we were something special. Yeah. 
He can hoop. I don't, I don't, he can hoop. He might not be able to windmill, but you know, he's he's one of the best players in the world. And being able to say that about somebody is crazy. Knowing people are going to game plan for him, people are going to double him, and he's still going to pick you apart. Being able to have someone on the team like that is amazing, and there's nothing you can compare that to. Uh, last question. Uh -huh. There's a video of you out uh, surfing from All-Star Weekend, and everyone feels intimidated. Yep. He's giving you advice on your super rookie season and now your third season and you're probably going to have your first season. What is that moment like for you, especially in rookie year? Uh, full circle. You know, I feel like uh, I've seen him whenever I was back in college, seen him before college, and now going up against him as a, he's an amazing player. They're an amazing team. It just, it, it gives me, I don't even know what the words to say. It gives me like pins and needles because I'm excited. Being able to go up against such a great team and being able to try to, I, I know I'm going to fail, but being able to adapt to the things that I'm failing is something I'm looking forward to. Something I'm looking forward to is just going out there, making a mistake, learning, and then correcting that mistake in front of people. And lastly, you seem to embody a lot of mentality within the team. Like, what's your definition of success in your Definition of success. Not being the same person you were yesterday. Being able to learn. It might just be one little thing. Just being able to change one thing in your life. I feel like that's the slow progression that everybody needs. Thank you. It's just connection and chemistry. Just trusting he's going to throw the ball at the right time in the right area and having the trust to know that I'm going to jump and go get it or Gaff is going to jump and go get it. You know, there's been times of practice where we mess up or the time it might be wrong, but we're going to do it again and again and again until we get it right. You know, I feel like that's what we've done in, throughout this entire season. No matter if that's on the defensive end or the offensive end, we're going to rep it out as many times until we get it correct and until we can perfect it.